The product upsell widget in reconvert is a widget that allows you to add an upsell of one or more products to any page that you want to in your store. To learn how to use the reconvert flow builder and the reconvert editor, I encourage you to go check out our help videos. This video is going to focus on the product upsell specifically. So the product upsell is a top level widget in the reconvert editor. What that means is that it can contain a few different widgets inside it. By default, when you create a product upsell widget, it contains three different widgets inside it. And let's go over them now and see exactly what each of them does. Looking at my navigation menu in the reconvert editor, I can see my product upsell widget and I can collapse or expand the widgets under it. And then I can see three different widgets. We have the divider. This is a simple line that allows you to organize the visuality of how your widgets look in your store. It's very simple, self-explanatory. There isn't really a whole lot that you can do with this line. Next, we have text. And this is a simple text box with styling that you can use to add any kind kind of explanation, title, or anything like that that you want to to your widget. When you click the text in your navigation menu or inside the preview, you can find in the actions menu at the right section of the page the text that you can edit and change. And lastly, and the most important part of the product upsell widget is the product part. And this is a bigger widget with a lot of different blocks inside it that we will go over right now so that you know exactly how to set it up and get what you want to in front of your customer's eyes. So when the product is selected, we can see in the actions menu all of the different options that I have to select which product will show up. You can see that here I have a placeholder of title, image, variant, etc. That is because this is a dynamic product recommendation selection. So a specific product will be selected and rendered only when the customer actually reaches checkout and sees this. The way to control that is by selecting products to display. And you have a few options here. The default is Shopify recommendation. This uses Shopify's recommendation engine to recommend something based on the products that the specific customer was already interested in and purchased. The second option is the most expensive product in the cart. This will show one of the products already in the cart, the most expensive one, to the customer. In some places in the purchase flow, we've found that this works the best for customers. I wouldn't recommend using this for pre-purchase upselling like in the checkout, but this is a very recommended setup for things like post-purchase upsells. Next, we have the cheapest product in the cart, which is essentially the same thing, except instead of choosing the most expensive one, we'll be choosing the cheapest product. The next four options are integrations that we have with third-party apps. We have Wiser, Personalized Recommendations, Rebuy, and Recomatic. If you click each one of them, you'll get specific instructions about that app and what you need to do to actually install it and enable these recommendations. Lastly, we have specific products. And if you choose specific product, you will need to select an actual product from your store. And you will also see this product in the preview because this is not a dynamic recommendation. This product will show up for anyone who sees this widget. Let's go back to Shopify recommendations. If we select Shopify recommendations, the next setting that we can choose is the recommendation intent. And you have some explanation here about exactly what this means, but this is a way to tell Shopify what engine we're going to use. The related recommendation is the default because it is auto-generated by Shopify, you don't have to do anything. But it could also be a little less accurate depending on how much data Shopify has about your customers. The second option, complementary recommendations, is something that you have to manually set up in your Shopify store. It can be a little more intentional and accurate, but more manual. So choose the right option for you. Next, we have exclusion tags. Exclusion tags are tags that you can add to your product. And if you add these tags here, this will exclude any product that contains these tags. For example, you could create a dedicated tag that is no upsell and add it here. Now, any product that you tag with no upsell will never show up in this specific widget. Please note that if you have a few different product upsell widgets in your store, you need to add this tag as an exclusion tag to each one of them. And the last setting is to hide the products that are in the cart. Meaning if Shopify recommendations return the product that is already in this customer's cart, don't show it, show something else. So these are your options on selecting the product that you want to show. You can save after you've made your changes. And now let's move on to the different blocks that this product widget is made out of. The first one is the image. And this is 
this little square here the product image that the customer will see. You can choose if this image will be contained or cover the entire section. Cover will stretch it out even if it does hurt the image resolution and contain will make it fit as best as possible while keeping the image resolution. Next is image to display. The default and recommended option is the main product image. But maybe in this case you want to show a specific image, something different that is not related to the product. You can always do that by selecting a specific image and uploading it into the editor. I'm going to keep it as main product image. And lastly you have the option to change the image according to the selected variant or not. If you have a few variants and each variant has a different image, this will change the image depending on the variant selected by the customer. Moving on, let's go over product details. The product details are essentially the title and subtitle of the product. The product title by default is a product name. You can display an alternative product title and enter it here. For example, this is a product. So this will show up no matter what product your customer sees. So I don't recommend necessarily using this unless you are using a static product. I'm going to keep it as the product title. And then for the subtitle, you, sell, you can select what text is going to show up here. It can be the name of the variant, the vendor, the type, custom text, or nothing at all. I'm going to keep it, if you choose custom text, you can of course enter the text. But I'm going to keep it as the variant name because I think that makes the most sense. As always when making changes, just to make sure you don't lose anything, we're going to click save before moving on to the next step. Description. The product description is this little part right here where we can expand or collapse it. This will show whatever product description you have on your product page. Take into account that this widget is not a large widget and some product descriptions can be very long and might not fit in this page, which is why it's collapsible. But sometimes, even when it is collapsible, it wouldn't be recommended to show the entire description. You know your products best and Take that into consideration and decide if you want to show the description or not. You can display the product description or hide it entirely. If you do choose to display a product description, you can select to display an alternative one. And this is a static product description that will always show the same text. Again, just like with the image and the title, I don't necessarily recommend using this unless you are using a static product in this upsell. Lastly, you can make this description collapsible or not collapsible. This way, the customer will always see the description. But take into account that if the description is very long, then this widget is not going to look good without the description being collapsible. If it is collapsible, you can choose if the default state is expanded or collapsed. I always recommend collapsing it and keeping things short unless the customer wants to see more. Lastly, you can control the text of description. Just like with everything in reconvert, we allow you to control every text that you want so you can translate it, change it to a terminology that fits your store, etc. Again, I'm going to save before moving to the next block, which is price and discount. In reconvert, we have three different prices to each product that you can display. I'm going to go over them so you understand what each of them actually means. The first one is the product compared to price. This is the same product compared to price that you have on Shopify. If you are given a discount on Shopify on this specific product, meaning not through a coupon code, but actually through a built-in discount in the product pricing, this is the product compared to price. It is usually the most expensive price visible to the customer for this product. Second, we have the original product price. This is the actual product price on Shopify. So whether this product is discounted or not, when the customer gets to checkout, when they actually have to pay for the product, what price would they be paying if they don't have any coupon code? This is the original product price. And lastly, we have the product price including discount. This is the calculated product price including the discount that you are giving through reconvert if you are choosing to give to provide a discount. So this calculates the original product price and takes off whatever discount you decided to give before we convert and shows it here. You can select all three if you want to, but you have to select at least one by minimum. We recommend showing either all three or the original product price and the product price including discount. Now, if you select all three and one of them doesn't exist, you don't have to worry. The customer will simply not see the one that doesn't exist. You can control the size of these prices, medium, 
small, large, individually, just so that you can emphasize the price that you want to emphasize. Now, let's talk about a discount. You can apply a discount, and as you can see, it already added the second product here, the second price, and it is looking a little wonky with the sizes, so I'm gonna go back to default. And with the discount, you have a few simple options. First of all, you can limit the discount so that only orders above a certain value get these discounts. You can set up your amount here in your store currency and only orders that are this value or above will see a discount for these widgets. Orders in a lower value will not see this widget with a discount. It will see it without one. For the discount type, we manage the discounts for you to make life much easier. You can choose a percentage, fixed amount per unit, meaning if I add two or three, I'm gonna get a discount for each item that I choose to add to the order, or fixed amount per order, meaning I can set it up as 10, and I'll only get $10 discount for the three. Doesn't matter how many I add. I always like to go for percentage, and this time we'll do 10%, save it, and move on to the buttons area. We have only one button for this widget because I am editing a product upsell for the checkout. And in the checkout, there's no need for a decline button. They can simply not edit and ignore the existence of the widget. I can choose the button type to be prime secondary or plain. The colors are taken automatically from your Shopify checkout settings. So you can change the color here, but you can change your checkout settings in Shopify and the button colors and the text colors will change automatically accordingly. For checkout, I always recommend using either secondary or plain because checkout has one primary button and that should stay that way so you don't distract your customers. If you are editing this widget for the product page or for the thank you page or post purchase, then I would definitely recommend using primary. I'm gonna keep it as secondary and I can always edit the text of this button. The default is add. Again, I'm gonna save and move on to the variant picker. The variant picker is a very simple part. You can choose if you want to allow selecting a variant or not. That's it. If you don't allow it, there will be a different variant selected and your customers will just have to accept this variant or not. If you do display a variant picker, then you give it a text if you want to change the default name of this picker. Please note that if you choose a product that doesn't have variants, it's just not going to show up. So that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. Moving on to the quantity selector. The quantity selector, similarly to the variant selector, you can display it or completely hide it. Maybe you don't want them to be able to control the quantity. You want them to only buy one. That's also an option. You can change the label text of the quantity selector in case it is visible. You can choose a default quantity and you can set up a minimum quantity. Maybe for this upsell, you want them to have to buy at least two. But to be able to do that, you first have to change the default quantity to be bigger than one and then the minimum quantity can also be bigger than one. If I want to make the minimum quantity three, for example, I can't. I first have to change it here. So pay attention to that, but you can select a minimum or a default quantity and you can also set up max quantity. Maybe this is a high in demand product and you don't want to run out, so you can limit how many they can buy. I'm going to click save again and move on to the last part, success and error banner. After a customer clicked add and accepted the offer, you want to show them a message to know that it worked, that it was added to their order. So let's preview the success banner. This is what it's going to look like. The item was successfully added to the cart and they can undo and remove it from the cart if they want to. You can choose a banner type of info, success, warning and critical. Of course, in this case, it's a success banner, so why not success? You can change banner text and of course translate it if you want to. You can make it a dismissible banner or a non-dismissible banner, which will add or remove this little X here. And you can display the undo button or hide it if you don't want them to be able to undo. Next, we have the error banner. If for some reason they were not able to add the product to their order, we will show an error. And this is what it's going to look like. There was an issue adding this product. Please try again. And here we will change the text to be dynamic depending on the error that we actually got. So you can either select a dynamic text in which we will show in English what the actual error was, or you can uncheck that and just edit the text to be something generic in whatever language you want to. This banner can also be dismissible or non-dismissible. And of course, we have the banner type just like we do for the success banner. I'm going to save again. I do want to say one thing about the success and error banners. You can cancel them. You can make them not appear. I wouldn't recommend that because 
you want to give your customers an indication of what happened. Was it successful or not? So I would recommend showing them and not canceling the AO and success button, even if you just show one generic sentence. This is how the product upsell widget works. One last thing that you can do with the product upsell widget. I mentioned in the beginning that it can show one or more products inside the product upsell, but here we only have one. So if you want to, you can very easily add a widget inside the product upsell. You can add whatever you want. And let's say I want to add a product. I can set a completely new set of rules and settings for this product and show something completely different than what I showed here. And it's under the same product upsell widget. You can see that it's all collapsible together. You can do this an unlimited number of times. Do take into account where exactly you're going to place this, how much space you have so that you don't damage your customer's experience with your store. You can always, if you want to, hide anything inside of this widget, move it around each other, and of course, delete any widget that you've added. To delete a widget, you just need to stand on it and click remove widget. This is it. This is the product upsell widget. I hope this was helpful. Please comment on this video if you have any questions or feel free to reach out to our amazing support team. Happy upselling!